Liquor Commission. And we'll proceed with the approval of the agenda for tonight. One more. Oh, shit. Motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Second. And seconded by Beth. All those in favor, approval of the agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Agenda is approved. That brings us to the next item. Say again. I don't think, Teresa, are you on? I was. Oh, how, do I get, how do I get my picture back? <laughs> Your Go down to on. the bottom. So Is there a camera the down at the bottom with a slash through it? No. No, how her, her picture showing. Yeah, we can see you. Oh, there it is. Okay. It might be that. Yeah, it might okay. be that. I'm, the, I'm here. Page. I got it. Uh, All right. So our second item is approval of minutes from July 15th, 2020 and July 30th. We'll take them in two separate motions. Um, so let's go on the first one, July 15th, 2020 minutes. I would move approval of July 15th minutes. Second. Motion by Bill, seconded by Teresa to approve the July 15th, 2020 minutes. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. All right, on July 30th, 2020 minutes. What's your wishes? I'll move to approve. <clears throat> Second. All right, Teresa have um, moved to approve and Linda seconded the motion. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from July 30th, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. We'll go on to number three on the agenda, public participation. So I guess in a voluntary fashion, if anybody has anything to bring before the commission, please uh, do so at this time. Does anybody in the audience tonight have anything do they wish to bring before the commission under public participation? And just, just to note, you may be muted if you're trying to talk right now. So you're going to need to unmute yourself. Okay. Um, if I hear nobody with comments or things I'd like to bring before the commission, we'll move on. That'll bring us to item four, old business discussion and possible action regarding previous plans for new fire station costs involved in 2020, 2021 budget. So this is a recap uh, from the previous motions that we have discussed in the past. And uh, if there's any information to discuss on this topic, we can discuss it at this time if anybody wishes. I'll just say that I had requested that this item be on our agenda. Um, I'm glad that you're here, Chief Rhodes. I, I didn't think that you were going to be here. Um, <clears throat> the reason that I thought that we needed to uh, put this back on the agenda is for our budget discussions for this year. Um, it's, we all know it's gonna get cold here pretty soon and that station is not gonna be any warmer than it was last year. Um, so um, after a lot of thought going through some um, previous records, I found that we actually did several space studies and um, I was hoping that we could take the staffing model that we talked about at our joint meeting and look to see if any of those models would be sufficient for that particular staffing model. I'm not talking about the garages um, and lunch areas and stuff like that. I'm talking about, do we have enough space in those paid for plans 
is there space to accommodate the um, staffing that we are going to be looking at with Janesville? Um, now, um, and Jeremy, I think, I thought that you had previously been working with Chief Lippincott on that, but I, I, maybe you could correct me on that, or may, was it you, Chris? We do have a uh, old set of plans from like five, six years ago. Right. Um, the plans do show uh, approximately seven dorm rooms, if that's the kind of the question that you have. Uh, but obviously, um, those plans are going to be updated and um, looked at by, by numerous people um, to see if that's what you want to do. You're talking about building a new place, Litna? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm talking about when we do build, when we replace this building, I want to know if the staffing model that we are checking out right now is going to work in the plans that we have previously paid for. All of those plans, okay. so garage space, storage space, all of those kinds of things, it shows a workspace, it shows bathrooms, it shows locker rooms. All, those are the things that I want to know. Does that fit with the, the staffing model that we previously approved to look into at our joint meeting? Or is that an additional cost that we will need to incur as we continue to look to see what we need <clears throat> going forward for the new building. Does everybody understand what I'm trying to say here? No, I do. I do, Linda. Um, I do. I, I believe that those plans are housed at Five Bugles, but maybe there is a copy in the fire station. I'm not certain. Um, but we may want to contact Five Bugles just to see. I mean, we, you're correct. We paid for those. Yeah. Uh, if we've got them on a disc somewhere or something that they can compare them to the current staffing model, that would certainly be something that we should do. Mm -hmm. I just know that we're going to be looking at, uh, we're, well, we're going to have a budget for building. So is our budget for building going to include what we have already put into a budget for this building, or is it gonna be, we're gonna just start all over and not look at any of this stuff? Um, I personally think that if we can utilize plans former that we formerly have paid for, that's awesome, but I just wanna make sure from you guys, if this is all right with this staffing model that we're looking at. I don't, I mean, we can't go back. And, correct, correct, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but, um, you know, right now we said let's go ahead and um, explore the feasibility of the consolidation model first with the uh, fallback being the, um, uh, the standalone Milton, Milton Township uh, uh, model. Um, depending on which of those we eventually land on, um, you know, I think we're gonna to have to look at those plans and the plans are gonna to have to be freshened if nothing else. But um, I'm assuming that um, the space needs under the uh, standalone are, is, is gonna have some stuff that the consolidated model doesn't need in that some of the administrative services in the consolidated model would be happening off-site, uh, whereas all of the administrative services would happen on-site in, um, uh, in the Milton standalone uh, model. So, you know, for sure, there's gonna be some tweaking that's going to be necessary. I don't think that that says that we don't take a look to see what the fit is. And I think that would be a really good thing to do. I think that does make a lot of sense. And, um, uh, you know, we've got um, uh, several people with expertise who can 
uh, look at that and give us their opinion based on what they see in looking at those plans. Linda, do you remember about what time frame those plans came out? Was that 2016 or was that before that? What, what plans are you referring to when you um, say, was it the five Dugo plans? Was it the... I, I thought it was... Jeff uh, Romer? 15. <clears throat> I thought it was in 2015, but maybe it was 2016. Okay. Um, but then I also thought that we had gotten plans with the general for the fire station. Yeah, you did prior to that, but the latest ones were with... Uh, Lippincott just and uh, just about the time when uh, Jeff took over too, but it was mm -hmm. done right before then when Lippincott was still in charge. Okay, gotcha. I think those plans were with five vehicles. I don't think that the, with Jeff Romer there were ever any plans developed. No, no, no. He, he didn't do them. If you're correct. Five bugles did them. It, as I was saying, though, it was right before they, uh, Jeff came in to do the study. Yes. All right. But and if, was, and in those plans, it was, um, there were preliminary plans, but they were intended to address a standalone station. Um, right. But it was somewhat minimalistic uh, as a standalone with right. design for uh, expansion. Right. Now, regardless when we go, if we go into new construction, blueprints will have to be drawn. Um, these would just simply be a, like a guideline of, of what could happen with when blueprints are drawn up. So regardless, the construction phase would still have to go through that. And um, I mean, we can't use directly the, the document as it is. It's going to have to be somewhat tailored for whatever staffing model is chosen. Um, but it is, a, it is a good point to bring up in the conversation to talk about the uh, the possibility of how we might need to look at the building itself and modify it, maybe even for existing conditions until a new building is built. Um, but we need to get a copy of those plans. Jenny, do you know if you have a copy of those on file that we can forward out to everybody from Five Bugles? Yeah, I don't know that it's uh, appropriate now. I, right. It would really be down the line after right. a decision is made. I just wanted to make sure that we have this in the forefront for budget and that, you know, if this is a place where we can cut because maybe something else that we've done works, it's something to look at. Yeah. Well, to be clear, we're probably not talking about these expenses being incurred in the 2021 budget regardless. We're not building a station in 2021. Right. Why couldn't we start a station in 2021? Why couldn't we start those plans? We already know that we're going to have to replace our building. We don't have funding, Linda. You know, it's going to have some costs incurred and, and without going back to the municipalities and of which we're nearly borderline in the black as it is, we'd have to go to referendum. And if that funding is not available, it's hard to start the project and then run out of money through the project, you know? No, I mean, Normal, we have always had in our budgets, buildings. We've always had a building budget. So I guess maybe what we need to decide is as at what point is that budget going to become the new station? And at what point do we stop putting money into this station? I mean, can we go through is it possible to go through 2021 and not have to put any money into the building that we're at right now so that that money could be directed towards planning of the new building? I think it depends on what, <laughs> it, it depends on what occurs. I mean, there's, there's standard ongoing maintenance. Uh, okay. We made a decision within the past year uh, to go ahead and take care of the brickwork because we felt that uh, that that was a pressing need um, mm -hmm. and that uh, we, we really had to take care of that. Uh, I think it really depends on the nature of what would happen. 
if something would happen that endangers health and safety of staff, um, that's going to have to be addressed and we're going to have to find money for it. On the other hand, um, you know, to a certain extent, I suppose there could be deferred maintenance uh, if the operational referendum passed uh, as, as proposed, regardless of which way we go, um, we'll have uh, better information and I think start to have a better idea in terms of timetable. Uh, you know, if, if the referendum were to fail, I, I would think that's going to push the building out further. Uh, if the ref referendum passed one way or another, we're going to have more information to, um, you know, share with the residents uh, as to uh, anticipated costs and so on of the actual building. I know the attorney's the, asking to comment down oh. here. Uh, go ahead, Ernie. I didn't see your hand. Hey, yet. good evening, everybody. So I really like the conversation. I'm glad we're still talking about a new fire station because we need it. It sounds like the seven dorm rooms, uh, regardless of what staffing model may be sufficient. However, we need to decide, is it one bunk per dorm or is it three bunks? Because uh, it comes up to people, what we call hot bunking. It means you share bunks, you change your linens every night. So we need to look at that. The main thing on the fire station is that, you know, you would need a kitchen, you would need a day room, you would need uh, a, an, a room for the officer of the day and then a report room, and then depending on any other officers, then you would have to add that. I think, Jeremy, what was the cost back in 2015 for that station? I believe it was just short of uh, $6 million. Okay, $6 million. So, it, it, you know what? I mean, we could take one look at the plans and see if that looks like going far, further, but uh, the chairman's correct. We would have to redevelop the blueprints and redesign because standards have changed significantly since 2015 but like the conversation glad we're moving it on um and that's what i wanted to comment on thank you thanks chief now the Linda. dates on the dates on things i'm i'm sitting here looking at the estimate of probable cost and a conceptual plan from five bugles uh and it's december 18 um uh, however, the, the drawings are, you know, they're really basic conceptual plans. I mean, they're mm -hmm. not construction plans. They're not Correct. anything like that. They, they, they really are um, just a very basic conceptual plan. Um, if what Linda is talking about is some money in the budget so that that conceptual plan might be updated in 2021, that might be a practical goal. Um, you know, during, during uh, the upcoming year, but uh, certainly having construction drawings and, and uh, uh, that next phase, uh, I don't think is practical given the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Linda, to caveat, um, the line item in the budget for building is of this year's budget, $34,700 was allocated um, of that $17,273 is remaining out of that budget for 2020. Um, but that's that's miscellaneous building expenses all lumped into one. So I guess as far as being having money in the budget, there is some money, but that money is being used for the maintenance more so than forward planning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I I don't want everybody to think that although we are we we already know that we're doing a referendum for operations but we've already made it very clear that this does not have anything to do with the building so i just you know i i don't want this whole conversation to confuse anybody else that might be listening the um, any type of a referendum would be operational the buildings, we already have known for several years that this building is not compliant and it needs to be replaced. Um, right, but at this point, we don't know what type of structure we need if we're doing right. um, a consolidation or a standalone. We don't know then where it will be. We don't know how many pieces of equipment or what type of equipment we'll be placing in it uh, because we don't know if it's 
as I said, consolidation or standalone. Uh, there, there are too many questions right now to start designing a building. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think right now, if, as we said, if we can start to perhaps uh, contain some money that can be put aside, uh, I agree. We don't need to put together things that can sustain the building that we're in unless it's more of an emergency to keep that building intact, but you know, uh, not to continue it. Regardless, we have to rebuild a building. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you have any other items that you wanted to discuss under this line item, Linda, while we were talking about it? Um, no, no, thank you. Okay. All right, is there any more comments from anyone else? And we'll move on to the next item of business, which is uh, item five discussion of possible action regarding an increase to $15 an hour wage for firefighter and EMS staff. Um, this has been a very uh, challenging retention issue. Uh, we, we thought in order to save money in the budget, uh, we could work with $10 an hour wages for our firefighter staff and EMS. And unfortunately, it's just, you, there's no way in this competitive market right now for people um, finding jobs even at Target, for example, for $15 an hour as a cashier, you can't expect uh, your EMS and firefighters to do the same um, job on the ground, work fighting fires and going on calls for $10 an hour, $5 less than someone can make standing in a line at a cashier's office. So um, this item is, is crucial that we discuss this and take action uh, in the very, very near future. Um, and we need to explore how this is an item that we'll be able to fund. Um, we are talking this is a, a fairly significant increase if we're talking a five dollar increase per hour for firefighter and EMS staff. So um, I'm open to the discussion and see where we can go from there. Is this Mr. Chairman Chief Rhodes? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Chief. Yeah, so I, I agree with you. We need to pay our people more. There's no doubt about it. And if I could wave a magic wand, I would pay them twenty-two dollars an hour, right? but we can't do that. So in the preliminary budget conversations that we started uh, about two and a half weeks ago, it was myself, um, it was the three chiefs in Dan Nelson. We actually had tried to plug in the $15 an hour rate uh, for next year. And the cost for that is that is projected about $160,000 to increase that cost. And I don't know where we can find that money um, we certainly could raise that cost for the, between the end of the year, that'd be about $54,000. I understand it's a projection, but, but to sustain it for next year, it's about $160,000. And I think our budget is tight already. And I don't know if we can sustain that. So I just want to throw that out there to let you know that, the, that it's in process. We absolutely intended to bring that number to the board uh, or something around that through the, through the budget conversation and the budget process. So that's the projection and it may impact uh, the commission's. Uh... You kind of cut out there on the end, Chief. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, I just think it's important to share what the projection of that is, is for next mm -hmm. year, because if we do this, then we have to sustain it. And so it, I think that'll impact your conversation going forward this evening just to have that information. And Chief, you said it was 162,000, a potential increase? I, I don't, it's approximately 160. Dan, Dan Nelson okay. is here. He probably has a better, a better handle on it. He's probably got the spreadsheet. Yeah, I don't have the spreadsheet open, but yeah, it was right in that neighborhood of 160, 165,000. Okay. So we would need approximately 80,000 80, plus or minus a few dollars in order to, from each, from each municipality to for sure um, meet the budget increase for next year. Is that what we're kind of looking at? Well, then I think uh, the other question we have to ask is similar to what the two scenarios were laid out is, you know, our contracted townships, do we want to 
regardless of whatever an interim budget looks like for 2021 um, prior to any kind of implementation of either scenario, um, do we want to start to cost share um, the budget using that same methodology? And that, you know, that might be one way to solve some of our, our issues, meaning just the city and town, but then that's going to push costs onto the four contracted townships. So I don't know. I, the general gist that I got a couple of weeks ago was everyone was comfortable with the methodology of the equalized value, but we didn't really talk about what that would mean on an interim basis. You know, I, I illustrated what that meant in the 2020 budget, if that methodology was used. But like Chief Rhodes said, we haven't really done a whole lot yet with the 2021 budget. We probably will here in the upcoming weeks, and certainly by the end of September, we'll probably have a, a, a good first draft of that. And we can show what that looks like, and we can begin to have the conversation with Lima, Johnstown, Harmony, and Kashkinan to see what their thoughts are on what a preliminary budget could look like with increased uh, on call wages. Dan, can I ask a question? Yeah. <clears throat> it's been um, a number of years since we've needed to renegotiate these contracts anyway. And I, so has it been done since Chief Lippincott has gone? My, my understanding is the, the I know under, um, oh, the banker did the, it, didn't he? Yeah, the, the latest contracts are a two year contract that expired this year. Okay. Okay, so regardless, we're going to have to have some discussions with the outlying towns to to address the contract anyway. Um, and, and I completely concur that I think that we thought that the methodology made good sense and we apparently haven't been able to uncover the, the formula that was used um, prior to this contract uh, as to how we arrived at it. I think one concern that I have is the significant cost increase to those, those towns, but agreeing that, well, first of all, we have to have the conversation anyway because the contract is up. Mm -hmm. And then I guess it's a matter of dipping our toe into the water to see how it's, how it's accepted. Well, and it, we kind of talked about giving them a year warning that it was yeah. coming. You know, we can't just step on them and say, well, yours is going up 80%. 400%. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. yep. You know, that just sounds like a ton to dump uh, on somebody. Agreed. <laughs> I, think, I think it's also important to um, remember that, you know, the numbers that were shown with the two scenarios were with a full cost build out. And what we're looking at in 2021 is kind of continuing on with how we've done business, how we budgeted business, but um, it's obviously scaled down because it doesn't have the, the full benefit package for 18, 19 full-time employees. So 2021 will be an interim step. Yeah, they'll still, <laughs> if we use the equalized value, there'll still be increases, but they aren't probably going, I haven't done the math yet, but they aren't going to be like 450% increases because the budget right. isn't going from 1.15 million to 2.2 million, 2.3 million, like some of the scenarios are showing. So, mm -hmm. well, I think it also gives us time because if we give them a required due date for a decision of whether they're going to continue with mm -hmm. that agreement with us then we have time to plan as well. You know, if we, if we require a six month timeline with a decision whether they're going to continue with the contract with uh, the Milton City Township uh, agreement, then um, we'll know whether we, we're gonna have that money coming in or not the following year. And if we're not, then we can plan for that. 
with, where this year, if we're just dumped as of January 1, we're in big trouble. So, uh, yeah, that's something to consider as well. Dan, in the previous years, was it about a 2 or 3% increase per year? Is that kind of what the average had been? Is, does that sound about right? Correct. Um, I think what what was what um, Beth was alluding to previously is what started um, the what was the methodology that was used way back when and and I think everyone here can agree we don't really know one when that when when that occurred and two certainly the methodology is completely unknown because mm -hmm. it because it could go back decades for all we know so That's right right sure Brian do you remember when they when I, I know when I started, I remember that it was already there. It was just a perception and quite frankly, a lot of it leaned on calls for service. Um, we, even though we had talked about um, you know, municipal values, you know, being part of a traditional formula, but it, it, it kind of led to finally each contract was about how much calls for service have they had? Mm -hmm. um, we were concerned that that was fair in the first place, but I guess that's the best answer I have. What happened in the past? Chief Lucas, do you remember, Chris? You remember any of that? You're on mute though. Yeah, the way it was done many, many years ago is that we just basically looked into our crystal ball and tried to guess how many calls we were going to have in these municipalities. And then we said, okay, we're going to have 20 fire calls in Harmony Township. And we, we based our budget on $500 at 20 calls. Um, there was no systematic approach to it. That's why we, we always had many problems. Mm -hmm. That was many, many years ago. Okay. But it is it is a good point uh, mm -hmm. for the 2021 budget outlook if we're going to continue with the same methodology we've been using or potentially have um, a large increase to accommodate for the potential of an increase in our hourly wages for fire department staff. Um, that's that's going to have to come into the conversation tonight as to where we want to go with the, that direction if we want to continue with the approach we've been on and figure out if we want to split funding between each municipality to make a $15 increase or $15 an hour wage happen or if we're going to um, do a combination of leaning on the surrounding townships that uh, are contracted out to us. So. Because I think it's important for the public to know that um, the, the service provision that we're providing to the contracted townships is the same as what we're paying for. And I think, it, I hate to use the word fair, but it comes down to a fairness of trying to ensure that everyone's paying their fair share for that, that same service that's being provided. Um, if that makes any sense. Yep, it certainly does. Mm -hmm. Well, and agreed also that it, I'm sorry, Linda, that it's maybe not the end answer to the sustainability, but at least it'll help to contribute whatever that looks like. I agree with what Teresa had said earlier that as we're budgeting through this and we give them some timing, we'll at least know what the, the, um, what, whether it's been widely accepted or not, or whether they're going to make decisions to, to obtain service elsewhere. But meanwhile, the budget's being prepared for October for us to review. So we do have to, we, we have short time frame as far as if we're going to make something happen for 2021. Um, so unfortunately we don't have six months to wait for a response of whether or not they want an increase in, you know, a 10% uh, increase in their expenses, for example. Well, but their contract has to be reevaluated for 2021 anyway. So while yes, there's a timeline to it, I think that giving them this interim step, I think is, is going to be more palatable. I, I, of course, I can't speak for them, but I, it, it certainly will be better than looking at what the ultimate oh, end sure. goal was looking right. at for equalized value. That's right. But again, That's it, it probably won't arrive at 160,000, I wouldn't expect, maybe maybe so, but it's going to help to contribute. Absolutely. Um, I should point out, um, we're about a month behind in our annual budgeting process. Right. Uh, typically this, this meeting here, we would have 
in, in early September, mid-September, we would have had a preliminary budget um, from the fire, for the fire department um, with an idea of what we wanted to approve for, and it would need to be funded by the municipalities yet. We as a town, and we intend to, and I think like the city, we're, we have a budget workshop. We usually have two work budget workshops. One's in September, one's typically by mid-October. Um, and then we put ink to the one in October and propose that to the, to the taxpayers for a levy hearing, which has to be posted and heard in November. So we really have very little time to put together a budget here. I want to point that out. And it sounds like the intent was to consider proposing um, a wage increase for 2021 as part of the budget draft. Um, but I, I need to stress, we're kind of behind the eight ball here on the budgeting process. Um, all the timeline it takes to put together budgets at the municipal level and then the required legal postings to take it to the uh, levy meeting of the citizens in November. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Brian. You're right. John, I think Chris is trying to. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, thanks. You have to find a way to raise these wages now. Uh, you are handcuffing us as leaders of this organization. You first of all sent a message loud and clear when you talk about consolidation and uh, these the members of this department are not getting paid a decent wage. Now they're looking at the possibility of not even having a job here in a year or two. Uh, you're making it impossible for us to come in here and lead these people. We have to, we're, we're noticing scheduling gaps, we're losing people. If we don't find this money, I, I will resign from this department. I have had it up to here with being taken advantage of, with this fire department not being a priority. Uh, the fire station was never a priority for years, and all of a sudden that we're looking at consolidation. Now we want to build a new fire station. Now we want to make sure that that station is fine. I'm sick of it. Not true. That we is need to do something. Take care of your people. Take care of the people that are here right now doing a job. I've had it up to here with this. You guys got to work together. Do something for this organization. Do something for this department. And give us a little bit of help here and how we can lead these people. Every time they turn around, they're getting something taken away or they're getting something, they're getting more stuff piled on them. Even if you can give them two bucks this year, let's at least do it. Linda, did you have something you're going to say? Yes, I, I did. Um, uh, thank you, Chris. I appreciate what you're saying. I truly do. And I want you, first of all, as a response to what you're saying, I want you guys to realize that this commission in the last three years has done pretty much everything that you have asked. We just had a joint meeting of two governmental bodies based on a decision that came from all of you. Don't act like we're not doing anything to help you because not only have we been looking at and always the building, because I know what conditions you work in and so does everybody else. We have also been looking at little things like your benefits mm -hmm. or Wisconsin benefits that you can get into. We have been working diligently to get things done for you. And I don't think that there's anybody sitting on this board that wouldn't like to pay you more money. I don't think that's the question. But I have a question for the board. This $15 an hour, I'm a little confused. I'm not sure if, is this for the interim of whatever this final decision is going to be? Or is this a permanent thing? Because number one, if it's permanent, and this is something that we're gonna be doing right away, then we're gonna to have to be taking a look at our 
2019 budget at our next meeting to see if there's anything that we can do. But I so, think we have to have that on the agenda before we can really talk about it, don't we? For what part again, Linda? Don't we have to have the budget on the actual budget budget discussion, overall discussion on the agenda before we can Maybe Inga, maybe you can help me with that. I don't see. I'm here. Do we have to have do we have to have that budget item listed in order to discuss? Probably. If you wanted to talk specifically about the 2021 budget, um, I don't have the agenda right in front of me right now, but it just is speaking about the $15 and eight oh an hour wage increase, right? Right. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Correct. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. So I don't know that you could take action on the 2021 budget tonight. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is Larry. I believe you can discuss an adjustment to the 2020 budget, however. Well, we can't amend the budget. Well, we can make a recommendation. Um, I, I, I guess a preliminary way to look at it is we could um, approve for, um, I don't know, I don't know it would do any good, but we'd have, yes, we'd have to amend the budget. And as far as you're concerned, Linda, I believe it does have to be a line item to amend the budget because um, that is going to be something that people might want to discuss or have um, discussion points on it and at that meeting. But regardless, the line item is, it has discussion of possible action in it. But we wouldn't be able to, from what I understand, we wouldn't be able to amend the budget off that line item. Brian, does that sound correct? Well, I would, you know, I would have to have the information not only for the remainder of this year, but I would have to be able to see information regarding the 2021 budget mm -hmm. and information showing me the following year budget as well. Can we sustain those wages? beyond the remainder of this year, just for a few months before those wages are increased because it's, it's really impacting a budget long-term. So I hear what you're saying and I understand that, but this is exactly why I asked for this to happen and to be on, on this tonight's agenda. I wanted to know whether this was going to be a possibility. So we waited two more weeks and here we are without anything in front of us. And I don't want anything to go further without us being able to take action on this. Well, but now I I'm think, hearing that we may not be able to take action. Well, I think what Dan and Ernie are saying and what they've actually even already discussed with Chris, Jeremy and Pete at a meeting is that they don't think that there's money to do it. Well, we know there's not money. There's a $160,000 potential shortage in each municipality. That's not the funding issue. We need to each decide if the municipalities are going to cover that or will be shared amongst the service contracts. Right. And I guess that kind of stems around, are we going to increase those costs? So if somebody that? tells you there's not money, you, you go and ask other people. And Along I don't about this time, we need to look, there will be nobody to drive the equipment if we don't have anyone in the station. So then we look at what we've, what we've got sitting in our, in our equipment fund, or is there any COVID money out there that we can reallocate someplace? I mean, we just have to get creative here. I, I cannot stress this enough. We have got to get this taken care of. Mm-hmm. I agree. So we're just we're just held hostage and uh, come up with this money. Where the, what where this has led us today on this line item is that I understand the intent was to bring this in a proposed budget for 2021. Um, even if it's not, it certainly sounds like it will be a topic of discussion about the, the budget process for the fire department when that's brought forward um, and I'll, I need to also stress you may need to meet earlier than the third Wednesday of October. Um, so I don't know when this budget pro proposal or draft budget will be available.
to discuss with the fire commission, but that, that needs to happen sooner than the third Wednesday of October. Um, mostly because at a municipal level, we need to um, ink in a budget for 2021. So the only way that we can really proceed with this is, first of all, based on what Teresa said, and I agree totally, um, I need to have a little more information about where, how this is going to affect things. Um, and I understand that, that Dan and you chiefs and have all talked about it, but I would also like to see some of that information. Um, and then the other thing that, I, that I'm hearing is that um, we really need to have it listed direct a, a little bit differently on the agenda in order to talk about this the next time around. So do you want a motion to do just that, John, or what are, what are you thinking? Uh, I can just go ahead and add to the uh, next agenda with Jenny, um, potential amendment of the, well, if we're proposing a budget, we wouldn't even need to amend unless we're going to start paying the wages this year. If we need to find money in this year's budget, then that's another conversation. If we're only talking about 2021, that can just be in the proposed budget that we received from uh, the fire department. It needs to be discussed for this year. The commission, Go ahead, Brian. The commission has the ability to move. The commission has the ability to reallocate uh, authorized funds in 2020 uh, budget. Um, Correct. To increase the 2020 budget or to approve and finance a 2021 budget, um, ultimately the municipalities have to um, approve that. But as far as being able to manipulate an existing budget and work within the numbers of an existing budget, the commission can do that as long as it's a line item to amend the budget. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, so it's that was kind of where I was going with this. If we're interested in uh, getting the increase effective as soon as possible, then we have to look at the remainder of 2020. And then I can add a budget line item to amend the current budget for um, wages and uh, salaries, for example, in that line item on, a, on the budget list. And then we can talk about trying to reallocate money from different parts of our, um, our current budget, or we'd have to find external sources for um, covering those costs, depending on what those costs might be. A preliminary number, someone like Dan was saying, was around fifty, fifty-two thousand dollars for the remainder of the year to cover the um, increase in, in wages if we wanted to implement it right away. So that needs to be forward thinking through the end of this year, and then when we get that budget pitched to us from the uh, fire department staff and the chiefs, then we'll that can be included in that budget for 2021 without us having to take direct action tonight for 2021. Um, but like, it, let's talk about that for the moment. What are your wishes for the 2020 year? Can we get the increase? I mean, if we, if we discuss this and we create another meeting um, sometime in September, is that enough information um, gathering time to create that solid number? Uh, I guess Rose? you need to ask the department people that because from what I just heard from Chief Lucas, maybe they don't want to wait until we can possibly get through all of the information that we need to look at. So let's ask them. I uh, let let me interject here. Uh, Go ahead, just Bill. A second. I I think there's I think there's another possible path for us here, uh, and that is uh, we we've got to figure in the roughly fifty thousand. Uh, gap for this year if we go to the 15. Um, I think there's a, a possibility here for us to go less than the 15, but more than the 10, 12, 13, something like that for the remainder of this year, uh, and then propose the 15 for 2021 um, with the understanding that in 2021, we have the opportunity for renegotiating those other township contracts, uh, there's some possibility of uh, a source of, of other dollars to mitigate the, the, the big bump in 2021. We don't have that in 2020. Uh, We're stuck with the dollars that we've got available to us and uh, uh, reallocation. 
I would say that I think that it does fall on us as the commission uh, to find the dollars for uh, the staffing issue. Uh, I haven't been on the commission all that long, but certainly the message that's come through uh, is a difficulty in uh, appropriate staffing levels uh, because of both the uh, organizational framework uh, and because of the dollars being paid to the workers. Uh, and consequently, I guess what uh, I would suggest is as a step of, of good faith to uh, the employees saying, uh, let's provide something, uh, you know, it's going to hurt. It's going to mean reallocation of some dollars and looking for every penny that's not allocated or, or not likely to be spent in, in our uh, 2020 budget. Uh, but as a sign of good faith, go to 1250, uh, go to 13, whatever we can do. Uh, and then the commitment of, of uh, putting that 15 in for the 2021. I thought we had just said that we don't know that we can do anything in the 2021 budget because we won't be increasing the township's money. We can't do that in 2021. We correct have to give them a year in order. Correct. Uh, no, we're not. We're not. Uh, well, you're talking about 2021. Yes, where you just said we can increase their funds. The the 20 the discussion that we had about funding from the other townships was based on the scenarios of the consolidation or the standalone uh, full-time professional department. Um, I don't think that there's anything that prevents us from renegotiating the upcoming contract with the townships and saying uh, that the allocation uh, has been, uh, to, to use the word that Dan used, kind of unfair. Um, you know, looking at those numbers, I agree with that. I think that, uh, um, you know, both the city and the, and the town of Milton, uh, the town of Milton even more than the city, uh, has been paying more than their fair share. Now, whether that's enough or not is another question, but the fair share of the budget that's there. Uh, I don't think so anybody disagrees with that. Bill, the idea was to give them the idea to uh, discuss that with their constitu constituents and discuss what kind of increase that would be and then determine whether they want to stay in contract with the Milton City and Township Fire Department, whether that's still a cost that is reasonable to them or whether they want to change to a different department. Well, you know, one way that we could do this um, is if we can get our towns to do the in half of the increase in 2021, we can use that money towards the what we would need to accommodate the increase in the salaries okay i see ernie has something to say go ahead chief yeah so <clears throat> so yes we we need to find a way to pay our people because at the end of the day the most important thing is that a fire truck or ambulance rolls up at anybody's house or any accident is fully staffed so Here's some, I, I think the thing is what I'm seeing is that here's my options as chief is we can look at the budget. We can crunch the budget down hard. You know, I think, you know, it, you know, everybody's got to, I realize the importance of having everybody on the truck. And so, you know, there's ways to, to find more funding in the budget. For example, uh, you could absolutely cancel um, the, the contract with Janesville for me to be the fire chief that would open up additional funding. You could reorganize the command staff. Uh, you could look at, do you need three command officers? You could look at that. Do you need um, all the apparatus that you have? Can you cut maintenance? Um, you know, because here's the deal, I'm absolutely willing to give up my position to get our people more money. And so 
uh, I would be remiss to not throw that out there to you folks so that you have all the options on the table. I'm more than, more than happy to meet with uh, the command staff and Dan Nelson, uh, the chair, uh, or the subcommittee to really go through the budget and start really, uh, I mean, being extremely gr aggressive mm -hmm. on trying to get the funding for the people to get on the fire trucks because at the end of the day, that is the most important thing. So, um, you know, we can go back and do that if you, if you all would like us to do that. That's a very admirable thing to say, Chief. Uh, I appreciate your input on that. Um, any discussion on those comments? I don't think it's necessary for us to look at um, taking positions away, um, and I'll specifically speak of Chief Rhodes' position. I don't think that's necessary at this point in time. I think that we all just need to have some information to look at so that we can all make sure that we have the same information that we're looking at. So, so why, don't we, why don't we try this? Why don't we go back to the budget process? Why don't we get everybody together and, and shoot for as close as we possibly can to get to that $15 an hour uh, as a budget recommendation? And that, that means that we've got to really have to trim, trim, trim. We've already trimmed, trim, trim. But why don't we try to do that as soon as we can and bring that back either to the sub, you know, the subgroup, subcommittee, or, or to the to the committee as a whole, um, and try to find a realistic solution. And in the meantime, maybe uh, the commission can have some dialogue with our partners in the townships to see, you know, can they contribute more and not have the you know the to plan for a, a greater increase so that would be my recommendation and i can forward to everybody the contracts that we currently have with uh, the municipalities that we service um, i have all of them pulled up here i can forward them out so you can see the current allocation and the previous year's allocation for 19 and 20 um, just as a benchmark so that you can kind of understand what the increase might be um, whatever the number, let's say if it is a 10%, 5%, whatever that increase is, you can kind of see that reflection upon the current rates. So if that would be advantageous for people to have some of that information, I will forward that out to everybody. When would the tip, when would uh, the information typically go out to Harmony and Kashkanang and... Uh, and well, let's uh, take a look here. Well, we, we were sent out, the, this was during our last budget meeting in 2018. Um, so, I sorry, a couple of years ago now. Uh, so we did no, negotiated these contracts in 18 October timeframe. So that's, that's when we approved them approximately. And then we forward them out to the townships after that. Okay. I think if we give them a little more of a heads up, maybe a, night, a letter that maybe, um, that Dan and Jenny could put together explaining that how we're changing our system. Um, I think that that would just, it would be easier for them to understand why there would be such a, such a major increase, especially Harmony. Has anybody heard anything from Harmony at all? Not since the last meeting. Yeah. Um, uh, Chester has uh, some comments that he wants to make. Go ahead, Chester. It's just in chat. I don't know whether yeah. it's, oh. it's just in chat. He says a card. Uh -huh. card. I make we make ten dollars an hour to risk our lives every day. And then he noted that crossing guards in Milton make twelve twenty-five an hour. Please explain this. So because this staffing model was proposed in a previous discussion a couple years ago to help reduce the amount of strain the budget had endured in order to maintain the staffing models that we had, um, it was proposed to have a $10 an hour wage for fire department staff. I'm not saying it was the best decision, but it was proposed to us and we were taking the information that was given to us by um, staff at that time and we made the appropriation. So we realize now it's not, it's not producing the outcome that we need to, to sustain our staffing model. 
and thus we are looking for um, better sustainable means and that's why we're having the discussions of the $15 an hour um, wage. So I understand it's frustrating, I, I really do. It, it, there's nothing that we would like to do more than pay people more. Um, and we're gonna try to do what we can to find the money in the budget and to manipulate the numbers in a way that help uh, reallocate those, those budget numbers so that we can pay you guys more. Mm -hmm. And money doesn't grow on trees, I think we all know that. I don't mean to insult anybody's intelligence by saying such, but we're, we're really in a really tight spot. You know, the township and the city are both in a financial lockdown, I guess you could say. We don't have additional funds just sitting in a, in a rainy day fund like we used to. Um, expenses rise a lot faster than the taxpayer dollars increase. So it's just a combination of things that happened over the past many, many years. And it's just, it's hard to keep up with it. Now we've reached a point where it is at a tipping point and we need to do what we can for you guys. And we're going to do what we can to make sure that we do take care of our staff. That's, that's one of our priorities. John, so, go ahead, Linda. Um, I'm, I was just wondering, you are talking about an increase to $15 an hour for firefighter and EMS staff. Correct. Where does this push our paramedics to? We did That's a good question. I'm not, I'm not sure where they're at. Paramedics now too. Correct. Well, the ten dollars uh, an hour isn't that's is that the paid on call salary because they're they're paid more than ten dollars when they're on a call. That would be paid on premise, Brian. Paid on premise, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it isn't ten dollars when they're on a call, but usually a lot of their time is they're waiting for a call. They're they're paid on call on premise, but it, there's a, there is a different rate when they're actually on a call. But that information we'll have with this in our next meeting, right? So we can actually take a look at this. I, I, you know, I don't see how we can actually get this done this year, but I too will try just like everybody else will because I always have and I always will. John, um, Chris Lucas has something to say and he's muted. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, my screen's not pulled up in the same way everybody's is, so let me see if I can fix that. Okay, go ahead, Chris. Well, first of all, um, I'll apologize for my last comments. Uh, I'm very passionate about what we're doing here. I'm very frustrated with the length of time this has taken. And Jeremy, Pete, and I are probably closer to this than anybody because we deal with the staffing shortages and the schedule openings and everything, and we deal with it all on a daily basis. So it's, it's a little bit closer for us. Um, we're just as much a part of this, some of these problems as the commission is. Uh, we, we've been a part of these decisions. We've been a part of these recommendations. We do appreciate the things that you have done for us. Um, you know, it's, this is a mess. I don't even know how to fix it. Um, but I've, I've never seen the morale as low as it is right now at the fire department. Uh, there's a lot of concern here. There's a lot of people that just don't know what the future of the organization is, including me. Um, I think we're moving in the right direction. But uh, we're just trying to hold this thing together. And uh, it's very stressful uh, when we don't know whether or not we have the schedule filled, when we don't know whether or not um, you know, we're going to get in here to get, get stuff out the door. So uh, I apologize for my outburst. Um, but it's something that I am very passionate about. Uh, I'm frustrated with a lot of things. And you know, I'll take responsibility along with anyone else. And the same as Chief Rhodes, I will retire at the end of the year if it opens up money for somebody else to, uh, to make more money. So um, with that being said, as far as the paramedic wage, the paramedics uh, are paid $17 an hour, the paid on premise paramedics. Uh, we're not getting any issues with those people at all. They're happy with that wage. Um, 
and that $15 an hour would be for the, the people that are on the engine uh, and responsible for taking like an ambulance out as a backup ambulance. The paid on call wage is based on that point system. Everybody's clear and we have actually cut that cut that in half it was seven thousand a month now it's thirty five hundred a month and then number of times you show up for paid on calls the number of points you get and then we split that thirty five hundred up between everybody's so just uh we need to put that in writing so that it's easily more easily understood uh we can do that and i don't mean to speak on on behalf of the fire chief but uh, i felt that i needed to apologize and take responsibility for some of this as well, because I have been part of these. Um, so that's it. Thank you, Chief Lucas. So some things that we need to uh, have available um, between now and the next meeting that we schedule, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, I can add to this list, but we need the contracts for 19 and 20 for the municipalities that we're servicing the cost increases, um, the co potential cost increase uh, for a $15 wage uh, for 2020's budget and its impact. Um, at some point, uh, Chief Rhodes, are we getting close to ready to prepare a 2021 budget? Are you expecting to have that done in about what time frame? So I, I, hope, I hope we can meet uh, next week and, and uh, really get the majority of it done. We started several weeks ago. Um, and uh, we, we just got uh, with all the meetings and everything. So we'll get back on that process, Mr. Chairman, and we'll try to get, get that done as soon as we can, sir. Okay. Do so we I guess- we meet on uh, the 16th, the third Wednesday of this month? I think- uh, I, I have no conflicts. I think that might be a little early for us to try to get to, to put together a good 2021 budget that only gives us uh, 13 days from now. I would, uh, I know there's a city meeting on the 23rd, um, but maybe the 24th or the 30th. That's a Thursday. I, could, I think the 23rd leading, would be my better. My question was leading to when would a, a draft budget be available? Is the 23rd good to have a draft budget available? Problem is there's another city meeting that night, the Board of Reviews meeting that night. 24th? 24th, work for people. Chris, Jeremy, Ernie, you think we can, uh, I think we could probably whip something up, have a draft that, that we could look at between by the 15th, 16th, vet, vet it, sleep on it. Yeah, we can make it happen. Let's make it happen. So we'll... Six o'clock work? Yeah, that might be a longer meeting, so six o'clock would That'd be That'd be best. awesome. Six would be great. Yeah. yeah. Let, so me understand, will... let me understand what you, you're talking about on the 24th is action on the uh, or the presentation of the 2021 budget that doesn't take care of the 2020 uh that you know we're, we're discussing right now i guess i would like to see that on the agenda as well for that date so that a decision can be made uh, at that meeting um you know I, this is one we can't continue to kick down the road, I don't think. Um, and uh, perhaps uh, as part of that budget pre preparation for 2020, um, we can look at uh, two pieces of cost. You're gonna have the right people together talking about the budget stuff um, and uh, uh, an implementation October 1st for the $15 wage and then perhaps uh, implementation November 1st that could make a difference in terms of the affordability for the remainder of, of, uh, uh, of this year uh, with specific recommendations for where those dollars would come from, uh, from within the current budget to deal with the 2020. Mm -hmm. 
I'm guessing anything uh, from 2020 is going to come from reserves because the budget for 2020, 71% of it already is labor. And I don't, I don't see how any savings. Okay. Yeah. It, it's super tight okay. when we piece that thing together. Um, mm -hmm. okay. it, I guess what, what I'm, what I'm saying is, but if, if we're pushing it down the road here to the 24th uh, on the 24th, I think we've got to have a decision on the 2020, um, uh, you know, whether we're increasing in 2020. Um, and uh, certainly in preparation of the 2021, I'm supportive of, um, uh, you know, starting off with the understanding of how do we accommodate the, the, the $15 for 2021. And, and I'm hoping that, um, even prior to the 24th, once we kind of have a good uh, preliminary 2021 budget, and this is just me speaking uh, how, how I see how we can try to run parallel things, we would uh, send out the 2021 budget to, to this governing body. And, it, and simultaneously, we'd be sending out that uh, that budget and, and potential cost allocation to the four contracted towns so they could see what that impact is. So we can mm -hmm. start to gauge um, yep. their uh, willingness to uh, increase funding to more appropriate levels for the services yeah. that we're providing. Yes, hey, my goal on the 24th. Oh, go ahead, Beth. Um, didn't we used to have a, an account with an overage in it like wasn't there an arbitrary $32,000 just sitting out there or something? Brian's shaking his head no. No reserves. We, we've taken money from uh, funds that haven't been used in building maintenance. That's the budgeted items, but we had an account, Brian, that we had money, a nest egg sitting in. Yeah, there's 80,000 sitting in there. In the reserves? Yeah, okay. but like, like uh, Chief Rhodes and I have said, the, the one concern we have is making sure that whatever model we decide to go with is actually sustainable beyond. Completely, I, and I totally understand that, but I'm telling you that knowing that that money is there for 2020, I realize that we have to look at sustainability, but knowing that that's there gives us a whole lot more breathing room for 2020. True. <laughs> Well, we can't go to $15 an hour if we can't sustain it for 2021. So for that reason, uh, during our budget discussions and possibly amending the 2020 budget as well, the 2020 budget amendment line item probably should appear on the agenda after the reviewing the 2021 budget proposal. Because during the 2021 budget proposal, we're going to probably there's going to be discussion about sustaining a wage. All right. So, Brian, you're saying on uh, the next scheduled meeting to ensure that the budget 2020, the 2021 budget is included in the first line item so that that's discussed and we, whatever action, once we've worked out all the numbers can be taken afterwards. Is that what you're referring to, Brian? Well, in, an, in the body of a agenda, I think you would want to discuss the 2021 budget prior to amending a 2020 budget. I, I, I understand I understand where Brian's going. I mean, we could have a 2021 budget and decide that $14 an hour was sustainable and 15 wasn't. Um, and where does that leave us if we've just approved the 15? Uh, you know, approving the 15 kind of ties us for 2021. Um, I'm all in favor of the, 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 the 15 and figuring out how we make that work in a 2021 budget. Uh, however, I think what Brian is suggesting is, is probably the correct way to go about it. Uh, uh, we act on the 2021 budget uh, and then, um, you know, uh, act on the uh, remainder of the year, uh, matching it with the, the decision made on 2021. And keep in mind that 
the commission doesn't have the authority to make final approval on a 2021 right. budget. That the, the electors still need to uh, approve it or authorize a levy that will support it. So ultimately, it's kind of contingent on a levy being approved by the electors, which is typically late November from the municipalities. So you need to keep in mind, we, we're, as a commission, we're not going to make final approval of the 2021 budget. We're going to we're going to recommend to the municipalities to fund it. Correct. So the, what I'm looking at for the 24th meeting, if that is a good date for everybody, um, is we'll have information regarding the contracts from 2019, 2020, uh, the potential increases in those township contracts uh, projections for 2021. Uh, the cost increases um, related to a $15 wage for the 2020 and its impact, and also the same on the 2021 impact for a $15 hour wage. So those are, the, those are the items that I'm interested in discussing. Does anyone have anything else that they're interested in having that put on the next agenda for related to this item that we're on now? Okay, if there's no other information regarding the line item we're on with the $15 wage increase or $15 wage, uh, we'll proceed to the next item. Discussion of possible action regarding an update from the meeting with the city of Janesville. So, so um, just nearly two weeks ago, I had a conversation um, with the city of Janesville and we were trying to set up a meeting and Chief George was called out of town uh, with the hurricane business. So we had intended some time during the last couple of days to be able to meet um, the mayor and I and um, the chief and the cities. And since the chief wasn't, we couldn't guarantee that he was available the last couple of days, the city asked to move that to a later date, which hasn't been chosen yet. Um, but in a brief conversation I had on the phone with the city of Janesville, um, city manager. Um, it was a very good brief conversation. It was a very encouraging conversation. Um, I was encouraged, um, but that, that has not taken place. Okay. Uh, Chief Rhodes, Linda, do you have something? Oh, you're on mute, Linda. I intentionally put this on because I, I asked because I felt like we, we're not sure when you're meeting with everybody and, and we would just want to be kept up. Yeah, the intent a week ago or more was to meet this past couple of days. Um, unfortunately, that didn't happen yet. And, but I did stress how important it was to address this as soon as possible. Um, and, and it was agreed. Um, it just hasn't happened yet, unfortunately. And Chief Rhodes, did you have anything that you wanted to add on this point while we're on it? No, sir. I believe uh, Brian is correct. Uh, unfortunately, I was, I'm up this month for call and uh, was activated to deploy. So something you can't control, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know Brian uh, talked to, to Mr. Freitag, so hopefully maybe uh, we, can, we can get that order. All right, there's no more information on that one. We'll move to the next item, which is discussion of possible action regarding requested items to be discussed with the city of Janesville. Um, I believe Linda also um, wanted to discuss this one too, right? Yeah, and uh, for good reason. Uh, mm -hmm try to figure out what are some of the criteria that the commission is interested in, in looking into um, in regards to the consolidation model. What are, what are some things that we expect? What are some things that are, are of interest in discussion? So Linda, did you want to start off? Did you have something you want to? Well, I, I would like to encourage them to let us keep our name. Um, at least Milton, whatever, if this is what we go, if, if this is what we end up doing. Um, and then the other thing is, I realize that this 
in a consolidation, the um, fire commission will not be as we are. Um, the fire commission in the city of Janesville is a citizen group. We did actually talk about that uh, several years back. Mm -hmm. It was decided that we, we were gonna stick with government officials. Um, but I believe that if we could just have a place on that table and, and uh, an opportunity to have at least one person from our area, I think that that's, I, I don't think that's too much to ask. This is a really good point of conversation as far as their commission is concerned because their police and fire commission is quite a bit different than our operating body. Um, they strictly adhere to disciplinary actions and the hiring process. And, and so that's, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chief, but I believe that's the, how the, the police and fire commission operates in Janesville. Um, it's because that's its main function depending on what purpose of having representation, if the purpose of representation is to um, ensure that uh, the, the, the former assets of Milton um, Fire Department, if the consolidation were to become um, approved, were to be utilized in a fashion that still served the community while um, reserve units would go to Janesville responding on normal calls. It depends on what you're, you're intending the representation to be for. Because um, if that's the if that's the interest, then that's not going to be achieved having representation on that on that commission board because that's not their function. So, Linda, do you know um, what kind of representation would you think would be best? If well, they, their their commission is. I mean, they do. It's that group of people. They do the same thing that we're doing. They do the hiring, the firing, the interviews. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we all took, you know, we all did, took part in that. I think, Brian, I think you were the only one that actually sat in the meeting when Chief Rhodes was hired, but um, I, I believe that um, this is, it's a, this is a common arrangement and um, maybe it would be to our benefit to, to discuss with other municipalities that have done this, if, what kind of agreements that they've done. I don't know. I don't know what any, anybody else thinks about that. Well, a couple of things. Um, there, there aren't really other municipalities that are doing what we're considering or proposing. Um, the Janesville Fire Commission does not <clears throat> operate virtually anything like this commission operates at all. Mm -hmm. um, I would not envision in a consolidation that we would either. In fact, an assumption I personally make is it's potentially a, an option that the Janesville Fire Commission would make those staffing decisions that they already make at right. the Janesville level. Um, I envision that we would still have a fire commission, mostly for the pur purposes of general communication and budgeting process, any annual budget budgeting process. Um, but that the, the largest difference would be once an annual budget is developed, the chief role would be much more um, for the lack of a better word, in control of the whole management. They would make much more discretionary decisions within the annual budget that's been approved. That's what I envision that uh, consolidation may lead to or look like. Um, but I'm taking notes on this because I've been talking with the mayor to the city of Janesville and, <clears throat> and the chief. Um, I need to know what your input is on what you might envision or what you want discussed. I would uh, like to, um, you know, I've been reading through the statutes and I think that I would like to have our lawyer look at it as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, because 
uh, by reading through the statute, it does look like the potential for some type of involvement more evenly across the, uh, you know, between Janesville and Milton as a partnership might be in terms of representation as well, that uh, we would have representation from each party instead of just uh, one person, that it, mm -hmm. it would be directly represented and it would be by a citizen committee, much like uh, already exists, but this time it would be between the two entities. If, if you were considering it becoming a true fire district, yes. Right. I don't envision, I would struggle to understand how a consolidation can look like a true district. Um, I, I don't understand that part. I well, I think we talked about it that this is the start of what could become a larger fi fire district, but that this Correct. is the start of it. Mm -hmm. And if we don't <laughs> talk, that's why I want to talk legally about it. And if we are going to start with that philosophy, then we need to work within that philosophy. Well, there is so, discussions on the legal sense of it. And the input we've gotten from council generally has been, we can do whatever we want contractually. Mm -hmm. But yes, I, you know, I would like, like I said, we'd like to talk legally, but also uh, the four of you need to discuss it as well, because it really sets uh, the, the guidelines within what we need to work with over the, the rest of this. Mm -hmm. For me, the, the largest unknown and that might be the most opinionated part of the process would be um, physical ownership. I'm talking about equipment and property. Where, what's the vision for what? And, and we were actually looking for maybe input from the city of Janesville on what those options might look to them. But to me, the, the, the greatly unknown is what's practical as far as um, property ownership from equipment and building. Uh, to caveat, I guess, on what Teresa was saying, um, in a greater idea of a fire district, in order for that to happen, mm -hmm. that we'd have to change the commission, the police and fire commission, James will have to change their operation and how that's being organized now. And then the power then designated from that body between the uh, city administrator, uh, the manager, and the chief would then go over a commission essentially like we function now on a greater scale which um, in theory sounds very um, entertaining like it would be a good like a good idea to look into um, but that would require a lot of movement on Janesville's part and uh, I mean I guess that'll those conversations will be taking place probably in the near future as far as how that might look but um, I think that would be very difficult for Janesville's position when they have a fully staffed uh, full-time fire department changing their their power ratio of how those the resources are allocated currently and then to have representation from other small municipalities interested in having a larger stake in the conversation which is that's fair on their end but i agree i think representation is going to be one of the biggest key points and and if we can't have good representation it's going to be difficult to make good decisions so oh, do you mind if i comment Go ahead, yeah. Anissa. Yeah, it kind of bugs me, but <laughs> I'll make it short. Go, um, go for I guess, it. <laughs> I guess um, I wouldn't just make any assumptions at this point about how anything is, is going to look. I think it would be appropriate for us to do our own research and look at uh, shared services agreements that have taken place between municipalities across the state. I think there's a lot of models out there that we could look at. And yeah. I do think it's an opportunity for us to create something that would be in the highest and greatest good of everyone. Mm -hmm. So I'm just uh, trying to keep an open mind. And I also understand that like 
this isn't a decision that's been made. It's we're just gathering information. We haven't made a decision whether we're going to consolidate or we're going to do uh, a standalone. Um, so I guess I, the only thing I would ask is for everyone to keep an open mind and to not make any assumptions right now of what anything would look like. I think I think what that means is that the questions that get asked, uh, it's not our saying, well, you know, we want this kind of representation, we want X, Y, and Z in very specific terms. I think the questions become, how will the interests of the city of Milton, town of Milton be represented in terms of the governance of this unit? You know, that we broaden the question and ask the bigger questions as opposed to having our menu of uh, this is the way we want it. Because I think, um, um, I don't think they're sure at this point either. Yeah. That, that's a fair statement. Any other uh, comments and discussion on this line item? No. All right, we'll move on to the next one. We're trying to keep her moving so we don't have a 12 o'clock meeting tonight. <laughs> discussion and possible action uh, regarding when the Joint Fire Commission attorney should be present at meetings. So going forward, there's definitely going to be a lot of conversation um, and a lot of legality conversation. And I believe, Linda, you wanted to have this on the agenda to decide when she should be coming to those meetings and how can she can help facilitate those conversations. And how much are we going to get charged? <laughs> That's true, too. Um, I can't quite remember. Maybe Dan or Jenny can help. Uh, was she just on retainer or were we having her, or do we actually allocate certain dollars in the budget specifically for legal fees? Because I don't recognize that line item. We pay her only when we use her for something. Okay, that's what I thought. Jenny, how much is that per hour? Do you know? Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it would be different if she has to travel somewhere or if it's virtual. So it's probably different now than it was before. But I can look it up and send it out to you. Is that under outside services? Just as a heads up, is that the line item that it usually comes out of? Mm, no, not outside services. Um, I'm not sure if it's a specific line item at this time. Okay. That is a good point, though. We're going to have to ensure that we have some monies available uh, for legal fees um, regarding either drafting of contracts or conversations about contracts or intergovernmental agreements and that sort of thing. Um, so, and even going forward for uh, the 2021 budget um, might be, might be advantageous to um, have some input if the contracts that we're developing for the other municipalities need to be reverbed at all for the uh, increases too. So, some some good information there um yeah that'd be great if we could figure out exactly where that money is being kept uh, that we're willing to pay those expenses out of because if we incur several hundred dollars or potentially more than several hundred dollars of um expenses that definitely will have an impact on overall budget especially for 2020 so we want to ensure that we're not uh, tapping into um, money that can be used for uh, better served purposes such as wages But did anybody have specific questions that they had um, developed between the meetings that we've had uh, that they would like to refer to the attorney to have um, looked at more in detail? Well, at some point, we're going to probably want the attorney to be involved in um, some draft models of consolidation proposals. Correct. Mm -hmm. And and until we have some of that data started or drafted, there's nothing to look at yet and, and get input on. But eventually, I anticipate that we would ask the council to look at um, some of these concepts mm -hmm. for consolidation. Do we need to have our attorney look at the new model that we're looking at for um, service fees? 
for the towns or that letter that we might send to them saying that we've increased because yada, yada, yada. Um, I'm not sure. It's hard to say at this point. I guess it depends on what the conversation goes in our next meeting as to what we anticipate changing and how those changes will go into effect with the contracts. Um, if it's a pretty straightforward contract, it's um, almost verbatim the same as what our contract is currently, just with the new appropriate numbers, then maybe not. Um, but if we are planning on changing the verbiage of how the contract is reflected, then, then yes, I would say we definitely want to have that reviewed. But that, I think, will come out in the conversations on the 24th. Well, most of it should anyways. So is there any other discussion on this slide item? Thank you for putting this on. Oh, absolutely. All right, fire chief's report. Do we have Chief Rhodes with us? Yeah, I'm here. So uh, total calls for last month are 81. The training that we did was SCBA review in advanced operations this month. And I believe you've got the, the budget packet and uh, Dan is online. He can review that with you. Um, but as he said earlier, we're 71 at 71% of the budget, or excuse me, 71% of our, our costs or personnel. And uh, we seem to be tracking really well, uh, to be honest with you. Dan, any other comments? No. Okay, we'll move on to the president's report. I have a question. Oh, go ahead, Linda. Um, this was actually, uh, I was going to ask at this portion of the meeting, is it the chief that is going to send something to these municipalities or is it the commission that's sending? Is the commission some representative from the commission talking to these people or is the chief still going to their meetings? I know we had talked about that before. I just want to know what the process is going to be. Is the chief going to do this or are you going to do it? So I was under the anticipation that, uh, or under the perception that we were going to have that discussion about what the changes are going to be. And once those changes are um, established, are going to be proposed through a letter to each municipality. And if they request additional com like comments, they can either come to one of our meetings or if they needed physical in-person uh, representation, um, one of us or myself um, could go to that meeting and and comment on whatever questions they had reflecting those dollars in the budget. But, I, think uh, it, it was, I think it is imperative that there be a single point of contact though, uh, and that single point of contact be identified um, uh, in the letter uh, that goes. Um, so that, um, you know, and if, if, if John's that single point of comment, fine. And John knows when, um, you know, we need some, dollars and cents figures from Dan or information from Ernie or whatever it happens to be. But I, I, I think it is important that that be specified. We don't want to send mixed messages. We don't want to send something out and then later on say, you know, never mind. Uh, um, you know, there's a new idea. Um, we want to be pretty uh, firm and straightforward and uh, provide the rationale. Absolutely. So when we have that meeting on the 24th, we'll have a good understanding of what those costs will be. We can, we can draft a preliminary uh, um, understanding of what criteria we have, uh, why the increases are, are being proposed. And then uh, between, we can discuss it, I, I guess at the next meeting, uh, but between fire department staff and um, the commission, we'll come up and create a letter and have those sent out to each municipality. And if the municipalities, like I said, have specific questions or comments, um, they can either attend one of the commission meetings, the budget meetings, or they can request presence for be at one of their board meetings if necessary. I, mean, I guess we can leave it at that and then determine who that point of contact will be, if it will be Chief Rhodes, if it will be a commission member, is an example. And we'll there'll be a separate line item on the 24th for town contracts. 
Yes. Yep. Yep. That's already on my list here. Uh, potential increases in township contracts is on my list. And I can, uh, I'll reiterate that here before we um, adjourn our meeting tonight. All right, uh, General, uh, no, President's report, excuse me. Do we have someone representing the President's report tonight? Is anyone here to discuss that? Um, I think he left the meeting. Sorry, he's off now. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, general items. Are there any general items that we need to discuss? Okay, so the next scheduled meeting, it says the September 16th, but I don't think that's going to work. So we're going to push it out to the 24th of September at 6 p.m. Now the 24th is a Thursday. So I know don't expect that to be a Wednesday. And the items to discuss are mainly budget related or contract related. So what I have currently are contracts from 2019, 2020. Um, Cost increases for the $15 wage uh, on an impact scale on a, for a 2020 budget, um, the 2021 budget, and this, uh, discussion and potential increases in the township contracts, and uh, cost increases related to the $15 wage uh, in the 2021 budget. So, all things very similarly related, but kind of individually, we could take action as we go, um, and that way, I think it kind of well rounds out everything that we need to discuss. If you have anything uh, that you'd like added or have discussion points on, just let me know. Um, but other than that. Could I, could I ask one more question? Go ahead, Beth. And it's not related to the agenda and I'm sorry for that. Um, I'm just wondering if there might be any grant funding available out there that, and I don't know what point of contact on the department is handling any of those areas. Um, just knowing that with the federal government's COVID dollars were, were handed over to the municipalities. And I don't know if we have a process for being able to request some of that as a department um, or if there's any other grant funding out there, because I know that we've had to obviously increase our operational budget um, based on needing to put some additional safety measures in place. And I watched our department roll up to a call this past week and they're having to don gowns and things that were never in our budget before. So I'm just trying to find out if, if there might be anything available for us that we can just find another stone to turn over if at all possible. So what, what we're doing at the city since we process all the, the fire department um, invoices is anything that is eligible under the routes to recovery we're running through the city coffers and, and turning those dollars that um, are uh, attributable to the fire department and returning it back to the fire department. There's been one request period, and I want to say it was four or five thousand dollars that we submitted. Um, and I don't know, I think there's another eight or ten thousand on this round two that uh, we'll be submitting here in uh, middle of September. Um, in the city as of right now has capacity. I've been in contact with Marcy at the town, knowing that we're a 50-50 partner. And she's aware that if we start to run out of funding, she'll try to see how many dollars are left uh, for the town of Milton's allocation that might be able to be utilized if we run out. But as of right now, I don't see us running out the last projection that I ran says that we still have about $30,000 of capacity left of the city dollars. That's excellent to know. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, I'll entertain up to the 24th, John. Uh, do you want to spend any time on that meeting um, on an update with the city of Jamesville? Or do you want to no, I want to focus mainly on budget related items because that's specifically why we're having to meet so soon is yeah. to address those budget concerns. I don't want to get bogged down with uh, other conversations not related to the budget since we're at that time of year. So uh, ideally, if we could just discuss those items, um, that would be ideal. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be spending a lot of time on this budget stuff. Mm -hmm. I, 
I don't think that that's a good idea, though, John. I, I, I mean, if if there's a meeting, we all need to know what's going on. Um, and you know, just the just the line item, just a just a report. I mean, chances are between now and um, between now and September twenty fourth that those four people getting together in the city of Janesville, if they do actually set a date, that's probably the only report that we'll get. But I think that we should have that continually on there as an agenda item. We can always put a time limit on it. I agree. Okay. I feel like there's so many other opportunities that, you know, we don't seem to be able to, to have great discussion it's it's difficult to even do this via zoom so any any updates i think would be necessary um if we're meeting as a as a body again well you just be prepared for longer meetings if that's okay with everybody else <laughs> what can yeah. i say but i think it's necessary for us to remain informed that's fair well, I, I can leave those on the agenda. Um, they'll be our last discussion points for the night. We'll uh, definitely be focusing on the budget and so budget related items. That'll definitely be where we're gonna spend most of our time discussing, but um, that's a fair point uh, between Linda and Beth to maintain those updates. Um, I was gonna say something else. Oh my goodness, I'm already forgetting. I'm not even that old and I'm already forgetting stuff. Terrible. <laughs> Be careful what you say, John. I know. Yeah. I resemble that <laughs> remark. <laughs> Move to adjourn. <laughs> Motion to second. adjourn has been and seconded by Bill. Motion to adjourn is in order. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? <laughs> motion passes, meeting adjourned. Have a good night, everybody. You too. Nice. Who, made, who made the motion? I missed yeah, that. Brian did. Brian, Brian? Made the motion and Bill seconded the motion. All right, thank you. Night.